Justin Popovich and I were just at Starbucks, and uh, uh, if you live in Orangeville, you probably know know where we are right now. We're just uh, uh, in a field off of Veterans Way that overlooks the whole town behind us here, and uh, I just noticed a condom wrapper on the, on the ground here. <laughs> so maybe it's not so, that nice here. So, um, you know, we picked a really good place to film. Anyway, uh, condom wrapper aside, Justin's got a story. <laughs> With no further ado... <laughs> Tell the story about your camping trip. Yeah, we were just we were just kind of talking about different stories, interesting things that have happened to us, and I had to admit to a semi-embarrassing but kind of funny story that happened, and there was a lesson in it too, so it was worthwhile telling. A couple of years ago, I guess it would be about four years ago now, uh, my wife and I went camping in uh, northern Ontario. It's a provincial park called Killarney, so some of you may have been there, and uh, it's a really nice setting. Like it's. Uh, Canadian Shield, lots of mountains, and you, you, you go canoeing and you get out into the nat nature and the scenery. You can do lots of stuff. We were mountain biking, typical kind of camping vacation in northern Ontario. And we, we're not the most experienced campers in the world. We've got some experience, but we certainly, you wouldn't want to take us on like a deep woods trip and rely on us as your guides. It would not be good. So what happened to us one night was uh, we were... Uh, you know, we had done our, our whole dinner thing, and I, I probably had a cup, uh, one more rum than I should have, and it wasn't completely wasted, but, I, you know, I had a few drinks. And, uh, and so we probably weren't as careful in the whole cleanup, uh, you know, post-dinner uh, shutdown. So, you know, as you know, for those of you that have camped, you should be really cleaning everything up and putting things away, because in bear country, you don't want to do anything to attract things. So Don't feed the bears. Don't feed the bears. So we went to bed and uh, thought really nothing of it, uh, other than I remember bringing some candy into bed with me because I was hungry. I wanted to have some licorice. And so that was the last thing on my mind. And then it's pitch black middle of the night, and suddenly I wake up to this like growling sound. It, was, <laughs> it kind of freaked me out. I was like, what was that? And I kind of opened my eyes and woke up. And my wife was still sleeping, and I just I was on alert. And I was sure, as you can imagine, you'd be the same way. And I'd listen around, and, and I heard another growl sound. So I was really starting to freak out. And so I woke my wife up and just barely audibly started telling her, there's a, there's a bear outside the tent. And, uh, and the next thing I remembered was there's candy inside, and I know bears like food. And, and then suddenly we hear pots rattling and stuff, and this is not good news. We were, we were starting to really panic and freak out. And, uh, and so we, we were just kind of sitting there and started thinking, what, what do I do next, planning my next move? And uh, it was kind of hard to do because my hands were trembling. I was that scared. <laughs> we were both so scared. And so I, the, the thought that came to my mind was my car was across uh, at the other side of the campsite. So I hit the keyless uh, remote to, to activate the alarm and it set off the beeping. But my car horn is terrible. It's barely audible, so it didn't do anything. Uh, keep in mind at this point, I hadn't even looked out. So I don't even know where this thing is or what's going on. And uh, so it gets silent again. And we, we, heard, you know, we heard some walking over in the bush, so we thought maybe we had a chance to, to beeline out of the tent, get to the car, shut the doors, and then assess the situation. So eventually, uh, we kind of mustered up the courage to do that. I, I peeked my head out of the tent, didn't see anything, unlocked the door with the key, ran, and, uh, and uh, finally got in the car and just sat and waited. And a few minutes later, we looked back and saw a raccoon coming back and realized that these growls and all the stuff we heard going on was just raccoons. A lesson in education I ever learned about nature is that apparently raccoons growl and, and sound like bears in the middle of the night, especially when you're dead asleep and you wake up to it. So it was a hilarious story, but uh, it wasn't very fun at the time because I was literally panicking. Like, I still remember the sensations of fear. And I just, I told Brad the story. We were both getting a kick out of, out of how real a fear you can build up in your head without really knowing what's going on in life. And so that story with just my wife and I don't like to tell that all that often, but I had to share it with Brad. He laughed. and I love it. I think, I think it's a great story because I think there's a bigger lesson here. And I think that, um, you know, the, the thing that came to mind when you, when you were finished the story was that, um, and I said this to you and, and you, you got a good laugh out of it. I said, we all live in a tent. Um, and, you know, I, I mean that metaphorically, but, but we all do live in a tent to some degree and whether that tent is invisible walls around you that you've created or, or whatever it is that's sheltering you from the future or the unknown or whatever it is, uh, are you choosing to see a bear outside the door <laughs> or a raccoon? Yeah. Right. And, it's and, true. uh, obviously, you know, you prepared for the worst and, you know, in a camping story situation, you did the right thing. You prepared for the worst and it, it wasn't the worst, but in the real world, do we want to see the bear outside the, the tent or do we want to see the raccoon outside the tent? And so I guess what I took out of that story was, you know, how do I look at my own external uh, environment? How do I see all that kind of stuff? And do I see the future or the unknown as scary or do I see it as cute and cuddly? 
And so the lesson I got from that is that I should start to see it as a little bit more cute and cuddly and a little less scary. Does that make sense? It does. Just go easy on me for my embarrassing camping story. That's all I could say. <laughs>